All right, welcome back and happy Monday. So today's lesson is about a person named Hernando de Soto. But before we get started, we're going to do a little bit of review. Um, so we've learned so far about two people who came and explored the Americas, and those people were named Christopher Columbus and Juan Ponce de Leon. And both of those people were not treating the Native Americans very nicely. They were taking them as slaves. They were forcing them to try to find gold. And the Native Americans were rebelling. They were attacking them. And we also learned that both of these Spanish explorers were conquerors. And the Spanish word for that is a conquistador. And they were colonizing um, areas, which means that they were trying to take an, a control of that area and control of the people who lived there. And remember last time we learned that Juan Ponce de Leon was trying to explore some of these new islands here. So um, we've got Haiti and the Dominican Republic here, which was the island of Hispaniola, where Col Christopher Columbus sailed to. But then Juan Ponce de Leon was like, well, I'm going to find my new places to live, some new places I can discover. So he went to Puerto Rico for a little while. But then, you know, hit Christopher Columbus's son was like, well, I'm in control now, so you have to leave. So he sailed over to the Bahamas Bimini, where he was looking for the Fountain of Youth, and eventually he ended up in Florida, and does anyone remember what happened to him there? He was attacked by the Native Americans, because the Native Americans said, nah, -uh, we don't want you here, and eventually he died because the Native Americans wounded him or hurt him. So that was the end of Juan Ponce de Leon, but today we're going to be learning about a new conquistador whose name was Francisco Pizarro. And we're also going to be learning about Hernando de Soto. So Francisco Pizarro, you might re recognize his name because at one in, in one of the first lessons that we did last week, I told you that he conquered the Inca Empire. And the Inca Empire was in South America, all the way down here. And the Incas were a really powerful group of Native Americans, but he conquered them because he brought disease, and the Incas had never had that disease in their life before, and so they weren't immune to it, and they a lot of them died and they got sick. So he was in these areas like, uh, here, let's find it on the map, Ecuador, he was in... Argentina and Chile, which are down here, Argentina and Chile, and he became pretty rich because there was actually a lot of gold in these places. And so, just like Juan Ponce de Leon started off um, traveling with Christopher Columbus, Hernando de Soto also traveled with Francisco Pizarro, who was conquering these areas down here. So, what do you think, you know, what, how do you think that changed Hernando de Soto's life? Because he was with Pizarro. How do you think that made him a conqueror? So we're going to find out today. And in our reading today, we are going to be reading from the reader, chapter five in the reader. So I'm going to read this aloud, and then you're going to have a chance to read it again on your own. So if you want to follow along, feel free. And as I'm reading... You're also going to fill out another expedition expedition log. So this is activity page 5.2. And just like before, you're going to draw a picture or write some sentences here and answer these questions. Okay? So you can open that up beforehand if you would like. And I'm going to get started. On May 30th, 15... 39, the veteran conquistador Hernando de Soto led a group of Spaniards ashore on the western coast of Florida. De Soto staked a flagpole into the sandy beach and claimed the land for the king of Spain. De Soto was not the first Spaniard to explore Florida. Juan Ponce de Leon had explored the area in 1513 and again in 1521, but he had failed to establish a permanent Spanish colony in Florida. Another Spaniard, Panfilo de Navarres, also tried to conquer Florida, but did not su succeed. Many of his men died during fighting with the natives. Others died from dehydration, being lost at sea, or drowning when a hurricane hit and sank their boats. 
In the end, of the 600 men who began the voyage, only four men managed to get back to Mexico to tell the tale. Hernando de Soto knew about the explorations of Ponce de Leon and Narvaez. He knew it would be dangerous to explore Florida, but he felt he could achieve more than the men who had explored before him. After all, de Soto had been in Peru with Francisco Pizarro, one of the most successful of all the conquistadors, when Pizarro captured and held for ransom the Inca emperor Atahualpa. De Soto had helped collect the great ransom of silver and gold that made Pizarro very rich. And de Soto, too, became a very wealthy man through his relationship with Pizarro. Hernando de Soto believed he could make even more money by conquering Florida and gathering up the gold that was rumored to be there. De Soto invested much of his own money in the Florida expedition, and he prepared for it carefully. De Soto signed up lots of other experts, including soldiers, sailors, tailors, shoemakers, engineers, and priests. Most of the 700 men on the expedition were Spaniards, but there were a number of recruits from other countries in Europe. The expedition sailed from Spain in April of 1538. After a year in Cuba, de Soto and his men sailed to Florida, arriving at the end of May in 1539. De Soto sent a scouting party inland and discovered an abandoned Indian village. Finding abandoned Indian villages was not unusual. By this time, many native people had learned that the arrival of Spaniards was usually not good news. Many chiefs decided that it would be best to avoid the Spanish, so they abandoned their villages. Sometimes, they would return to the village after the Spanish moved away. De Soto and his men established a base in the abandoned village and began to explore the surrounding land. They made a surprising discovery on their exploration when they found a Spaniard who had been living among the natives and had learned a little of their language. His name was Juan Ortiz, and he had been a member of the disastrous Narvaez expedition. Sometimes, Native Americans would adopt outsiders, including Europeans, into their tribes. The Spanish listened to his stories and decided to make Ortiz one of their translators. De Soto, and his men, or De Soto left some men near the coast and took, after, and took some other men to explore inland. He and his men made their way through swamps and forests. They found more deserted villages and helped themselves to whatever food and supplies were left behind. Some of the natives attacked the Spaniards as they marched. They would ambush or attack De Soto and his men in the swamps, and then run away. De Soto fought back viciously, hoping that if the natives heard how dangerous the Spaniards were, they would not attack. By mid-September, De Soto and his men arrived at a village called Naputuka. The local chief, Vitachuku, seemed friendly, but Juan Ortiz told De Soto that this friendliness might be an act. Ortiz had heard rumors that Vitachuku was plotting against De Soto. De Soto decided to take no chances. He attacked the people of the village and took Vitachuku prisoner. Vitachuku wasn't treated as poorly as other prisoners. He was allowed to keep some of his servants and often ate with De Soto. De Soto thought if he kept the chief happy, Vitachuku and his people would cooperate with him. This plan seemed to be working until one night Vitachuku and his people attacked. The Spaniards eventually won this battle and killed Mitachuku. After the battle, the Spaniards went farther north into Florida. A native de Soto took as a prisoner, told them of a city to the north in what is now called north South Carolina, called Cofita Chenqui, where the chief was a woman who had lots of gold and pearls. De Soto and his men went through what is now Georgia and into what is now North Central South Carolina. There, they met La Senora de Cofita Chique. Sorry, it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> the Lady of Cofita Chique. At first, the Lady of Cofita Chique was friendly, allowing them to stay in her village. She had very little gold, but she did have some pearls that she gave to the Spaniards as gifts. Later, however, De Soto arrested the Lady of Co Cofita Chiqui, held her hostage, and marched on. No one is sure what happened to the lady of Cofita Chiqui, but some historians say that she stayed with De Soto and his men for a while until she had a chance to escape through the woods. The Spaniards could not track her down because they were unfamiliar with the land. They never saw her again. 
DeSoto and his men went on a trek north and west through what is now Georgia and South Carolina to the edge of the Blue Ridge Mountains. They passed through territory controlled by the Mississippians. And remember, those people are the ones who built those big mounds that we talked about. Everywhere they went, they looked for gold, but had very little success. The DeSoto expedition eventually reached the area now known as Alabama, where DeSoto and his men fought one of their biggest battles. They killed more than 2,000 Mississippians. Only 22 of DeSoto's men were killed, but about 200 were injured, including, including DeSoto himself. The Spanish also lost many of their horses. By November of 1540, the DeSoto expedition had entered into Mississippian territory in northeastern Mississippi. They spent the winter in an abandoned native village. Eventually, the Mississippians attacked, firing flaming arrows. The Spanish escaped only because their stampeding horses scared off the attacking natives. With all the constant marching and fighting, DeSoto's men grew very tired and were ready to go home. They didn't believe that there was much gold to be found in these parts of America. Some of them began to plan a mutiny against DeSoto. A mutiny is when they decide to attack the leader. DeSoto, however, did not want to give up and go home empty-handed. He pushed his men on. They marched and fought their way west. In May of 1541, they reached the mighty Mississippi River. DeSoto and his men constructed flatboats to carry the men and horses and crossed the river at night to hide from the attacking natives. After DeSoto and his men crossed the Mississippi River, they explored what is now Arkansas. They met natives near what is now Camden, Arkansas, who lived in teepees and hunted buffalo. DeSoto and his men spent the winter there. By the spring of 1542, even DeSoto was becoming demoralized. That means he was losing hope. DeSoto had found almost no gold. He had lost many of his men, and his horses could barely walk. His translator, Juan Ortiz, had died, and the other translators were having trouble understanding the local natives. All of these terrible events together became the last straw. In May of 1542, DeSoto came down with a bad fever. He spent his days in bed, but the fever got worse. He finally died on May 21, 1542. According to legend, DeSoto's men attacked, attached stones to his body and then sank it in the Mississippi River so that the Native Americans would not find it and realize that DeSoto had told them a lie about being immortal or able to live forever. The remaining men of the DeSoto expedition made their way back to the Gulf of Mexico, where they built seven boats. In July of 1543, they floated along the Gulf Coast, past Texas, and eventually made their way back to the Spanish outpost outposts in Mexico. Throughout this difficult journey, the men on the DeSoto expedition were the first known Europeans to explore the southeastern United States, north and west of present-day Florida. All right, so that's the end of our read aloud today. I know that was a long one. And your job today, just like I said, is to fill out this expedition log to see, you know, to remind yourself what you learned about Hernando DeSoto. And after that, you are going to reread this chapter again, or just, you know, scan through it for some information. And then you're going to answer activity page 5.3, which is this next page. And basically your job is to look at the map, and you're going to write complete sentences. It says beginning with a capital letter, okay, so don't forget. And you're going to answer some of these questions. Okay, and some of the answers are in the map here. So good luck and let me know if you need any help.